this all right with y'all for this first piece? Can I ask everybody to stand up? Y'all actually don't have to participate, I just need to understand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. I remember saying the Pledge of Allegiance until we no longer were one nation under God. Oaths carried out by blood-stained martyrs who would never again see the shores they swore to defend. Folded flags to replace twisted bodies and trenches similar to arthritic fingers that stitched them. Betsy Ross could see the future. She crafted ominous warnings of irony into the very fabric we are taught to live and die for. She left stripes so we would know to read between lines. Stars in place of union jacks, for sailors, sailors value them, for those would guide them home. We are the birthright of the East India Trading Company. Caribbean pirates who stash truth in treasure boxes beneath sandy brown hair and name themselves historians. Pioneers of virgin land so civilized our pure white flags were stained red with skin of men who called this home long before we threw Plymouth rocks at glass houses. Drums beat in cannon cadences on fields of sugar and molasses as we wore for rum. Indentured servants noose themselves with lines from cotton gins to stick stars on generals who command bloodletting rituals known as battle. They stand in rows like by rank like chess pieces and move under banners of commerce towards Wall Street as pirates profit from our vices. We consume and they supply. We trade Jolly Rogers for Jolly Ranchers with Walmart. Freedom came so candy sweet. We are victims of false flag attacks because Betsy stitched a false flag. She, like America, fell in love with the bearer of ill news. She had five daughters, the FBI, CIA, NSA, IRS, and ATF. I think of her daughters and how twisted and ugly they grew, similar to the lie that she stitched a flag. It was a battle banner in a war against your mind, hoping that in the moment of terror we would be one nation under God, with liberty, indivisible, with liberty, justice for all. But God has nothing to do with this. Conversations with my granddad. He was like a wrecking ball of reality. Every moment of triumph was met with negativity. He was the American media in the face of a champion. I was Floyd Landis, Lance Armstrong, wow. Tiger Woods, Kobe Bryant, Mike Tyson, Michael Jackson. I was everything and nothing in the same breaths. Triumphs destined to be forgotten like Al Kaline. Scott Hastings, Grover Cleveland, Leon Spinks, or Warren Moon. I was Randall Cunningham to my grandfather. Amazing to watch and difficult to remember. He said to me, I construct criticism out of my selfish need to see your greatness. To shine in ways that dull flaws I am too old to fix. I am hard on you because pressure busts pipes or makes diamonds. Grandson. You are my pipeline to Sierra Leone, where my blood, sweat, and tears glisten in the eyes of a child who toils for the purest purposes. You are my legacy. You will be the voice behind the conflict in every ideal I have come to question. Young man, lift your head up. Put your shoulders back. Look mediocrity in the eye and tell it, I do not put my pants on one leg at a time. My glasses block blues that surround me so I can see a rose-colored future and that you are not a man because of the men you stand beside, but because of the morals you stand behind and the pride that you stand upon. You are my grandson. He told me that on my 21st birthday. And before that, I was 18. He 
said it again when I was 24. And I am sure that those words will be uttered in every imaginary obstacle I face for the rest of my forever. My grandfather was never one to let his words be forgotten. His tongue was the tip of a sword that impaled us as easily as it warded off foes. Undefeated in the arena of lyrical intellectual battles, he did not need a pen to be mightier than your sword. Arguing with him was a biblical tragedy. He would decimate all comers. His statements were evidence of the English language. They were that epic. And I still hear his message, head up, shoulders back, with mediocrity in the eye. He died. In 1992, I was 13. I still hear him in my unsheathed sword. Thank you for your constructive criticism. <laughs>